Hey guys, it's me again. And welcome to this is my moment podcast. And you know, here at this is my moment, we love to have a good time. We love people and we love smiling. Let's go to work. There ain't no stopping it. This is my moment. Uh, join the movement. We bringing people together, bringing positivity, making changes for the better. Cause it's all about growth. Today, I have someone on the line with me that's story is crazy man i was reading up on her and she has a lot to say and she i believe is gonna have a lot of good stuff for you keep your eyes open keep your ears open introduce yourself to the family <laughs> hi i'm liz bendit uh, and and i think that my claim to fame um if you want to call it that is i am a four-time cancer survivor i am made of cephalon uh I come at least four times. I'm fine. Uh, but yeah, I, I kind of took that experience and um, made a big career shift. I think like everybody else back in 2020 and yeah. I quit my corporate job and launched a, a business called the bomb box um, to that lined up with my experience, which is, you know, when you're going through all this stuff, um, you need a lot of functional support tools that are non-prescription. Yeah, and yeah. what you get from a lot of people is so well-meaning. It really is. It's really like, it's nice to be thought of, but it's generally about a lot of useless stuff. Like, no. you know, like foods that you can't eat or flowers that make you, the smell makes you nauseous or a lot of like, especially when I went through breast cancer, a lot of pink stuff, you know, like kitchen cancer, tote bags and coffee mugs and yeah. warrior t-shirts and, and all that stuff. It's super well-meaning, but yeah. um, it's not particularly wanted or needed. What you need is like tools, you know? You need uh, yeah. And so, um, yeah, so I converted, I transitioned um, that all of that. Don't get too deep on me, Liz. I'm going to yeah. ask you about it. Okay. You can ask me all that. I'm going to ask some up. questions on it. Anyway, I'm go for it. Go, go, go. <laughs> You finna give it to me. I love it. So I want to talk about the four-time cancer yeah. like, surviving. Which four did you have? What'd you have? So um it I my very first one was in 2009. Um yeah. and it was melanoma skin cancer. Oh, okay. Um that's when my kids were babies. They were yeah. three and one. Yeah. And then um 11 months later I had thyroid cancer. Wow. Um had no no symptoms whatsoever. It was yeah. caught accidentally. It was crazy. Um, that cancer, while not um, life-threatening, I ended up in this teeny, teeny, tiny portion um, of uh, patients. It happens to 2% of patients, so I'm lucky that way, uh, where I ended up what's called hypoparathyroid. Uh, it means oh. that I my body doesn't process calcium like a normal person, and you need calcium for muscle function. Right. It's why like a lot of bodybuilders eat a lot of like cheese and protein and mm -hmm. um and milk um so i um i went into what's called hypocalcemic shock and was yeah. in the hospital for a couple of weeks so they tried to figure out how to get me um regulated and yeah. then i spent like a year trying to figure out how to you know kind of get my life back together because i was i was a train wreck um and then um a couple years later I had basal cell um, carcinoma, which is not nearly as lethal as melanoma, but the downside, it was right on my face, oh, uh, wow. right in the middle of my nose. And so I had to have two plastic surgeries to get my face kind of recovered. Yeah. My last cancer in 2017 was breast cancer. Wow. So that's a lot. That's a lot of cancer. How did you stay positive? Like how? I couldn't imagine my wife going through all these things and her still having like a smile on her face, you know, how did you stay positive with all these things happening to you? I mean, I, I wish that there's a silver, there's not like a silver bullet answer yeah. to that. It's a lot of things, right? So it's a combination. I, I mean, I start with the fact that I have an incredible support network, right? Like I, mm. this was, I keep talking about my cancer in some way, cancers, right. As a gift, like this was huh. a test that my marriage has been through four times mm. and you know, the first time you wonder, if, you know, someone comes through and it's awesome. And then the second time they do, and then you realize that you can rely on each other through these, yeah. you know, various crises. And, and I think that that, that test is only makes you stronger. I mean, again, not only there are definitely marriages that don't, right. They, they go through these crises and they don't survive. And, and right. 
my heart goes out to those folks. But I was really lucky. Again, our, my marriage got tested and every time it got stronger. And so we, we learned to lean on each other in that way. Um, yeah. The other is, I think my, I learned to ask for help. Um, that's as a, as a borderline control freak, this was, this was hard. This was not, it doesn't seem kind of easy and it didn't come oh. naturally. So kind of learning when to say no, learning when, um, you know, learning when to ask for extra time, learning when to take time off, learning when to rest, yeah. um, all of those things. It didn't, and I think it, it built over time. Yeah. You know, the first, after the first experience of cancer, I didn't necessarily walk away with those things, but certainly by the fourth I did. Right. Yeah. So I think that, you know, again, the gift of, of having it four times is that you learn yeah. um, and kind of learn through each of those. Another is I learned to take more control of my care plan. I learned that through this whole process that, you know, I think we go into these things and I, you know, I participate in a lot of cancer forums and talk to a lot of survivors and, and patients. And my sense is that a lot of women in particular um, especially older women have this perception that doctors are all knowing beings that have like a yeah. very specific and, yeah. um, and direct care plan for whatever ails you. And that really is not the case. There are choices right. and there's, you know, everything comes down to, you know, odds of recurrence and specificity and, you know, what might be right for someone based on their particular cancer type or their health conditions or their combination of you know, any number of factors, all of those things contribute to what goes into a care plan. And they're up for negotiation. Like they're, they're yeah. up for discussion. This is yeah. not, yeah. you don't have to kind of, they're not directive. And I think that for me, at least, being a more active participant in my care plans made yeah. me also feel like I was less out of control. Um, yeah. When you talk to a lot of cancer patients, they talk a lot about feeling so out of control, like this is yeah. happening to them. And there's nothing worse than feeling like you're just, you can't do nothing. Yeah, right. <laughs> and so I think that going through that and at least taking some um, control and choosing yeah. my own care plans and being a part, an active participant in that conversation, yeah. um, gave me a sense of control, yeah. uh, which was really good for my mental health. Right? Like, yeah. okay, I chose this. And then finally, it's all about perspective. Yeah. My grandparents um, were Jews in Poland in the Holocaust, and mm met in hiding in Poland in 1942 yeah. and or 41. I, oh gosh, I'm going to get the dates wrong. Whatever it is, they were in hiding in the false roof of a barn for four years. Wow. Um, um, it was crazy. My grandmother was married before. She had a son. They um, sent her away. She looks like me, very Aryan, you know, blonde. Yeah. She had blonde hair, blue eyes, and um, didn't look like the classic as you know, the Nazis would say Jew. And she, um, they sent her to go find a place for the family to hide. Um, and by the time she found a place for her entire family to hide, um, her family had been taken away to the camps. And so she hid herself in the hopes of being reunited with them. Four years later, her um, husband and son, she learned had been killed in the camps. And so she married my grandfather. They had my mother. Over the course of the next 10 years, they had this crazy story in terms of emigrating to America. But yeah. at the end of the day, you know, they were just two very different people. My grandfather was really bitter um, yeah. Yeah. throughout that whole experience. You know, every time you talk to him, you know, you get the, look how we suffered. You know, this just very uh, yeah. angry, mad at the world. Everyone uh. owes me something because of what I suffered and went through. And my grandmother was so joyful. She was grateful for this life. This second it. life that she got, and and that and she was so in love with her family, and so right. just really like happy to be alive. And yeah. you know, so you have that as those are your choices, right? You can be yeah. a bitter, angry person, or you can be joyful. And you know, I learned <laughs> better sounds, to be joyful. And it sounds to me like you're joyful, sister, and you have, <laughs> you have every right to be. You said something, and I talk about this all the time man. having a sound support system yeah yeah and I, i'll tell you what I, I i get my cancer checkups and i do all that stuff so i don't have that but uh, when i came back from afghanistan i was there for about 10 11 months right and i came mm -hmm. back ptsd and, and 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 anxiety and depression and all this stuff right and my support system wasn't there because the military had deployed 
my wife, right? So I didn't have that support uh, system. That's so and when hard. I talk, and I know, right, it was it was it was the worst because in the moment that I needed it the most, it wasn't there. So I had to to figure out another way. But when you talk about your support system, do you think that without those people inside of your life that it would have gone this way, even though you took control, you still had them, those. No, no, there was, it was so thing. central. I mean, and, and I talk, you know, my husband is, a, is my rock and, um, hey. and I'm so grateful for his constancy. My mother is my rock and, and, you know, I'm really grateful and lucky we live in the same city as my parents and they were incredibly helpful and supportive. Yeah. I have incredible girlfriends. Um, it's, um, we have a little text chain and we're called the squishes. Um, <laughs> okay. I don't even remember the, where that came from, but it's a great word, isn't it? I dig it. Right. And those, and like my friend Stacy, just, I, I think that they know, they know me. Right. So my <laughs> friend Stacy did not bring me a lasagna. She brought me jello shots. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't and know. like I was recovering from surgery and sitting on the couch doing jello, eating like a lot of <laughs> lace jello. Yeah. It was great. And yeah. right, I don't know. Like so having people that get you that that you know understand what you need and, and yeah. when you need it. And I have other friends that just texted silly memes and, and um yeah. jokes. I mean, yeah. again, so having people that know your language was so important. So I it's not and, and certainly my kids, you yeah. know, my they they were incredible. I mean, certainly when they were babies they didn't understand what's happening. But by the time I had breast cancer, they were very aware yeah. of everything that was going on. And there were many nights that I left work in the middle of the day because I just I was so just exhausted and in pain. Yeah. I needed to take heavy meds and um, right, right. just couldn't function and my my daughter who was 12 at the time made dinner for everyone she I mean she made pancakes great whatever dinner's <laughs> on the table I think if I were by myself through all of this it would be much much harder to stay yeah. this positive yeah. no doubt a lot of times I think people look at the number right the more friends I have the more that I'm like the more friends oh, that I have, the yeah. more people. and then I, I sit there like my circle is almost the size of a period, you know, like it's <laughs> yeah. not that many people, because just like you said, the, the, the friends that were bringing you the jello shots, those are the yeah. people that know you. Everybody yes. was like, they, they'd come in. Oh, I wish you this. Oh, I wish. But then you like the people that's close to you, like, Hey, get up, take this. Let's right. go. And you start right. to laugh. Yeah. And now no. that makes you feel better. That makes you feel like, you know what? I can do this because I got people that's going to push me along. So when I'm down, right, they don't care that I'm down. They know who Liz is and they know what's in Liz's heart. So they like, look, sure. stop beating yourself up. Take this shot with me. And yeah. I <laughs> love it. I love it. And I got, I got folks in my life like that right now that if I'm having a bad day, like they like, dude, we don't care. We know that you, we know that you're going to get through it. So get over it. Let's get back to living. And, and it's, and it's, you you know, the other thing that's really incredibly special about this push is what part of that group got together a long time ago. Yeah. And um, we uh, started running together. Um, yeah. And so it started off as like just really like one to two miles around the neighborhood. And I mean, I was like a panting mess. And then a couple years by the a couple years later, we did a half marathon together. Uh, and so I think the other thing is the discipline of running has been so good for me in so many ways. Like one is just, I mean, in energy, right? Like it just, it's just that stamina, mm -hmm. um, I think has been also really excellent for me in terms of getting over my various illnesses and surgeries right. and all that, having that stamina built in is, is mm -hmm. super helpful. But beyond that, I do think that there's like running is, um, it's a discipline, right? Like so mm -hmm. much of running is mental. It's yeah. not really anyone can run 10 miles. Um, it's, but it's boring and it's <laughs> tedious. Right. And so yeah. if you don't have like, it's so much of like powering through, mm -hmm. you know, miles five through 10 is mental discipline as much as it is physical. Wow. And, um, and I do think that that 
was also super helpful for me, right? And so that this was the friend group that also did distance runs. Now, I will be perfectly honest. Stop I don't the- like 10 mile runs anymore. <laughs> I, I maxed out five is good. I'm good. Five miles, <laughs> comfortable. But I dig it. I dig my old lady hits are, are not not in favor of the 10 mile runs. But the you know, but I but I do think again. I I think that that was the other element, right? In terms of having people that know you, then yeah. Stacy in particular. I keep going back to Stacy. She's right. the leader. She also is. She loves distance running and always like, oh, you want to do five, five miles? Okay, great. We're doing the do six. <laughs> yeah. She's just a, she'll just push you just yeah, a little yeah, bit, yeah. like a little bit outside your comfort zone, and then at the end you're like, oh wow, I didn't realize I could do that. You know, so um, having friends that push you in the right way is just invaluable. Hey, shout out to Stacy. Keep pushing her. Keep yeah. pushing her. <laughs> so you talked about leaving the corporate world to become an entrepreneur. Yeah. In 2020, I believe. Yeah. Why did you I, uh, want to go from- What was that, the great a, resignation? Was I was part of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, right? Because it's funny. 2020 is when I started. This is my moment. So I, I, yeah, yeah, I get it. See? What made you go from getting regular checks, somebody cutting you a check- so you know what? I want to make my own check. What made you become a or want to become an entrepreneur? an entrepreneur? Back in 2017, and I was going through radiation and needing, right, I was talking about all these functional items, right? I wanted ice packs that wouldn't leak through my clothes, and I wanted lip balm mm. that would actually, you know, that would work, and I needed so much lotion. My skin was burnt to a crisp. Like, I was not just red. I was purple. Wow. Um, I was a train wreck. And like I said, I was getting all of these, a lot of pink stuff you know, pink coffee mugs and yeah, yeah. warrior t-shirts and breast warrior and silly yeah. breasties, boob joke things. And I just really, I, you know, I wanted stuff that would make me feel better. I didn't really care about all the, the pink stuff. And at the time I was like, where is radiationrelief.com? And it didn't exist. And I bought the URL saying, I'm going to do something with this. And then, you know, kind of life took, takes over and kind of move on with that. But in the moment, um, that was the seed. And then I kept thinking about it. And over the, between 2017 and 2020, every time that I was frustrated with my regular day job or life, whatever, I would kind of start tinkering with that business plan. What would that be? What's that look like? Yeah. And um, over time, it got bigger, right? Beyond just radiation, it was more cancer specific. And it was always something I really wanted to do. So by 2019, I knew that I wanted to do it. And we had to, and you know, my husband and I had relatively equal um, salaries. So, you know, me going rogue entrepreneur means cutting our income in half. Like you can't just do that, you know, <laughs> like that. <laughs> you had to plan. Yeah. So we started saving and we started really thinking about what that would be. And um, in January of 2020, just completely out of the blue, I got the opportunity to teach part-time at University of Kansas School of Business. It was just completely crazy. Um, This um, gentleman who had been teaching a very specialized marketing class um, called Customer Relationship Management had passed away, and they needed somebody to fill in with 10 days notice. And um, through my various network in Kansas City, I've been here, you know, over 20 years, I was recommended for the position. And it gave me sort of this, like, I joke, side hustle, right? Like this opportunity to work part-time that then would give me the window to go do bomb box. And so then the idea, so I was able to negotiate down my hours. I started working at KU with a plan that I would actually quit my job in summer of 2020. And that's when I would launch bomb box. And then the pandemic happened. Mm-hmm. And um, 